Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and please don't tease me. So today we're going to be talking about teens. I recently did a video on children in The Sims and how to make them more fun and when I went looking for information about teens, there was a dearth about it. I thought I would do my best to fill in that gap today. So as usual, you are going to get the most out of this video if you have all the packs and if you don't know where something is from, please ask me as I won't be mentioning any of them directly. Subscribe if you find this useful and let's just get right to it. So up until very recently, I was playing teens the way you would adults. But teens are little adults, despite the fact that they basically look like adults in the game, who haven't quite grown into their facial features. Teens are, in fact, preparing for adulthood, and that is a really big distinction. You can make sure they're ready by working on their grades, working on their character traits, working on their scout badges, getting them a job if you choose to, and having them enter relationships and friendships. Year teens have access to almost all of the skills that are open to adult sims, though not all of them. It became quite clear to me as I playtested this video that focusing on skills with your teen sims is actually a waste of time. There are many, many other important things to worry about and you can make skilling far more effective if you worry about these. Now I'm going to break down the most important ones for your sims future and your sims moods. There are also many things only a teenager can experience, chief amongst them faces and emotional swings. Your sim might come home enraged or really bummed out due to something that happened at school, and it is your job if you choose to fix it. Your sim's parent can also fix it for you too if you would like that. There is a lot to talk about here, so let's just get into it. Because your sims are preparing for adulthood, the most important thing that you can do is set them up for success. So this is how you can do that. If you did not already have your sim in Scout, this is the best time to have your sim join as soon as they age up. Use the phone function and have your sim join the Scout after school activity. Do this as soon as you remember, since you will get passive bonuses from things like homework, friendly introductions, and cleaning up around the house. Scouting also gives you concrete goals to work toward if you're feeling a little lost during your sim's teen years. At this point, a journal is nice, but not necessary. Your sim will use all the facilities your adult sims use and are able to repair objects if you want them to. So provided you have your household set for your adult sim, you do not need any extra objects for your teen. Your teen's homework will be provided for them by the school, but if it gets lost, you can buy it again on any bookshelf. Homework and grades are really important, so let's talk about that for a bit. The most straightforward element in your teen's life is your grades. If your child age up when they had an A in elementary school, they will have a B when they first go to high school. Have them do their homework a few times, and that should easily bump their letter grade to an A. Now, of course, like almost everything in The Sims, this is not necessary. However, you get a lot of bonuses if you do it. If your sim graduates with an A, they will start any entry-level job at level 3. With a B, they will start at level 2, and with a C or below, at level 1. Unlike children, teens do not get taken away from having bad grades, but they might lose responsibility, get negative moodlets, and have their parents get annoyed with them. If you're aiming to get from a B to A, make sure to do extra credit work. Now, as I said in my children's guide video, you should consider having a homework club with the homework club perk in order to speed this up a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to take far too long. Additionally, always have your adult sims help your teen sims do their homework, as that cuts the time they spend on it considerably. The easiest way to speed up homework in general is to make sure your sim is focused before they do their homework. So have them ponder moves on the chessboard, view focused art, or do something like a school project before they actually start working on their homework. Once your sim has an A letter grade, you can actually skip doing homework altogether, or click on the have fun function when your teen is at school, and then have your sim do homework when they're at home so that their grade does not drop. Grades are very important at the start of your sim's young adult lives. As they get older, they will stop mattering quite as much. However, it is a huge leg up to have your sim start on the third echelon of their career. Now let's talk about how grades are linked to university for your more academically inclined sims. I'm not going to talk much about this because this isn't a university guide, but just know that university is ideal even if you don't want your sim to have a traditional job. It helps a ton with skilling, it will allow your sim to have a much richer young adult experience, and the organization system is actually super cute, and at least in my own game, woefully underused. Preparing a sim for university is preparing a sim for the real world. So, this is where I want to talk about why you shouldn't focus on skilling when you have a teen sim. First of all, every sim is going to be admitted to university no matter what. The way that it works is that you're more likely to get into an honors degree if you have an A grade student on your hands, but you do not need to get into an honors course to get an honors degree provided your sim earns good enough grades during university. There are several scholarships you are more likely to get, 
depending on the level of skill that you have. For instance, having a high level of athletics is much more likely to get you into the soccer team than having a level 2 fitness skill. That said, if you've already maxed out the fitness skill and you decide to go for a biology degree, you'll be wasting your sims time at school since they won't be passively learning any fitness during their classes. This is one of the main reasons why skilling when your sim is a teen should be entirely incidental, simply a byproduct of whatever else you're trying to achieve with them. If you don't want your sim to go to university, that is okay, but it is better to have them focus on many different skills than one in general in order to have them be more well-rounded for whatever career you're hoping they go into. And this will, once again, feed into their aspiration eventually. So let's talk about aspirations now. I always recommend that you start with the fitness aspiration as soon as they age up to teens. You don't need to keep this at all, but it is super helpful to have the metabolism trait attached to your sim from when they age up. You can change it immediately if you want to keep an eye on the way your sim looks. This is the best aspiration to start with simply because of that big bonus. In any case, aspirations, much like skills, are really secondary when it comes to teen gameplay. Remember to change these as often as possible so that you get as many reward points as you can because you're going to need a lot of those sleep potions when your sim is at university. These are going to help a lot when your sim becomes a young adult. There is also, of course, the matter of scholarships. You'll get a better chance of getting merit-based scholarships by having your sim reach level 3, 5, and 9 of each skill respectively. This works out as mentioned a lot better if you're not going for anything related to these skills. For instance, if you wanted your sim to be a painter but they had a rocket science skill all the way up to 9, they would likely get the scholarship that comes with that and they wouldn't be wasting their time at university after reaching the top of their skill. This is something that you should probably pick as soon as your sim ages up to teen and why it's ideal to go for approximately level 3 in the skills that are relevant to your sim's area of study. Remember, as I said, to change your sim's aspiration and will and, you know, do it as often as you want to. Mold their aspirations around their skills and not the other way around to really maximize your benefit here. Now, let's talk about how to apply for scholarships. You know that you need to go on the computer or do it through mail or through their phone. However, you need to time this properly. You should apply for scholarships in large part before you apply for your degree. However, this is not the case for all scholarships. And remember, you are able to reapply, but there is a large cooldown period when you're not able to do so. Start by applying when your sim is a teen with the non-merit-based scholarships. The location-based scholarship is always a crapshoot and you should always apply for it. You should apply for the needs-based one too, if they show up. Additionally, if you have enough scout badges, you should apply for those. You can do this before you finish the scout badges, but obviously there's a lower chance you'll get it like that. When it comes to merit-based scholarships, make sure you apply it after you reach level 3. If your sim is accepted for a distinguished degree, they can also apply for the merit-based scholarship, but you have to do this after your sim has been accepted to a distinguished degree before you enroll. Start applying for scholarships when your sim is a teen, teen so that you can get the most out of the university system, and if you believe you already have your sim apply to university at the tail end of their teen years. These are all the systems that are going to set up your sim for the future, but for their teen years, that you should focus on as scouts in order to maximize their skill gains and their character traits. I've talked a lot about scouts in this video, but I am yet to tell you why you need it. Okay, so you should aim for the gold scouting trophy because it comes with a scouting ap aptitude trait. It's a really potent perk because it boosts all skill gains by 25% after you get it. You can find out which actions you need to take by going to your sim scouting board and clicking on badges or by clicking on your sim and clicking on view badges. Your sim should have started working on these when they were a child, but if they didn't, don't worry. Just make sure your sim joins scouts the moment they age up to teen in order to get the most out of this life stage. In large part, having your teen sim have a part-time job is useless, and you, sp you specifically want your sim to go away for part of the day. If you need a teen to bring in money, there are other ways to do so, and we will get into those specifically pretty soon. Even if you need your teen to be a breadwinner, you still should have them in scouts. Scouts itself is a little grindy, but you can structure it around other things which makes it more fun and it can help with this character value system in parenthood. Okay, forget having a good teen. Make a good sim. I spoke a little about character values in the kids gameplay video, but it's worth it to know that this system becomes much more important when your sim is a teenager. You only have a certain amount of time to make sure that your sim becomes empathetic, responsible, isn't emotionally volatile, is a good mannered sim and has the ability to do conflict resolution. Of course, you can go the totally opposite way, but this will make your life harder for your sim if you want your sim to be traditionally successful. 
Character values are really awesome because they affect how your sim acts autonomously. For instance, a well-mannered sim won't fart or burp around other sims, and a sim with high emotional control has mood regulation on lockdown, so their negative moodlets go away about twice as quickly as other sims. If your sim has poor emotional control, their emotional moodlets last over 40% longer than with sims without either trade. I won't go over each one because it would take too long, but just know that these are extremely powerful and can greatly affect your sim's emotional, social, academic, and professional life when they grow up. I'll tell you a bit about how to improve each character value, but it is up to you to find more ways to do so. Carl has done a breakdown and I'm going to include that in the description below. For now, this is a super quick primer on how to improve them with your sim's actions when they are teenagers. They are able to do different things when they are children and you need to find those out. For manners, work on friendly introductions with many sims, give compliments, set the table and clean up the dishes. For responsibility, complete school projects, do your homework, get good grades, make a sack lunch, brush your teeth, repair broken objects and clean up messes. For conflict resolution, try fixing bad relationships, apologize after negative interactions and make sure to make peace after fighting. For empathy, volunteer with the family, which also greatly improves the relationship and the social need. Ask other sims about negative moodlets and help other sims when they are sad or upset. To work on emotional control, Make sure to do everything you can to wind down. Write in your journal, listen to classical music, play instruments, or blog about your feelings. You can do a lot of different workout interactions to work on your sim's emotional control. So if your sim is going to work out, even if they are upset, or if they are not upset at all, make sure you check the action that has the words wind down on it, because these actually have an effect on their emotional well-being and their character traits. Now your teen can't actually make it on their own. They are not an adult, and it is at this point, after talking about their character values, that it is important for me to make one huge point. Your teen sim will turn out better if they have a guardian who is skilled in the parenting skill. I'm going to briefly discuss the parenting skill here, because I feel like it's really important to convey the depth of how it can affect your gameplay when it comes to your teens. To start with, I have to clarify that parenting skill and character values come with a parenthood pack, and it's very cute and adds a lot to your generational gameplay in my experience. EA doesn't pay me to say this. I don't get any money if you buy it. Now parenting is a gradual skill. And I like skills like piano or painting, you're not going to be able to see results right away. This skill is entirely about playing the long game. Your teen's parents can skill up their parenting skill by clicking on parenting from the social menu and clicking on any of the options available. Start by making sure that your sim is an involved parent during your child's babyhood and toddlerhood to make parenting a teen sim a lot easier. You get plenty of bonuses when your sim's parenting skill is increased, including being able to help your young sim solve their motives, and you'll have more information when parenting chance cards come up. These chance cards have a name. They're called teaching moments, and they're way easier when you know which character value you are sacrificing. Because while all decisions might be rational, no decision is perfect. Having a parent or guardian who has a good relationship with their children also greatly affects the success rate of the parenthood interactions. If you choose some of the harsher parenting interactions, you'll find that this has a negative effect on your relationship, but this won't necessarily last forever. Just keep that in mind. Now the thing about young sims is they're sort of desperate for guidance, and they're going to seek any adult's advice. If a younger sim has just aged up in the household and become a young adult, keep in mind that your children and teen sims might ask them for advice without them having any experience. You can only perform parenting skills on sims that are deemed guardians, so click on your teen sim when you have your adult selected and click adopt as care dependent, or do it from your teen's point of view. Click the adult and adopt them as care dependent. This is especially important if you have big families with young children and the parents have already died of old age. This does not stop your sim from asking any adult in the household for advice, as long as they have a relationship with them. But without it, your young adult sim cannot do any of the parenting interactions that will help them with helping your, your sim navigate through life. But your teen isn't in control of any of that, so let's go back to talking about what your teen is in control of. Let's go over your teen's daily routine. There are a lot of things here, so the most important thing that you can do, as with children, is structure your sim's day to take advantage of their free time. With your sim in scouts, your sim is going to go to school at 9 in the morning, come home at 3 p.m., and go to scouts on Saturday and Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Missing these activities or being late is going to negatively impact your team's responsibility, character value. 
Make sure you send your sim to school with almost every motive in the green, except for bladder and hunger. You want your teen to eat a sack lunch in order to get them a nice happy mood lid when they're away at school. When your sim arrives at home, take care of any needs. If they are hungry, immediately start the homework club gathering and have your teens do their homework. Make sure you have guardians or adults help them in order to cut the time that it takes them to do their homework in half. After your sim has finished their homework, it should be approximately 5 o'clock. Your sims will likely be a little bored by them, so have them do something fun and skill building. Like hanging out with their partner or friends, have them do some sort of fun exercise like dancing or play video games. It is at these moments where you can mold your sim's personality. A really fun way to do this is to let your sims take the lead. For instance, I never had one of my sims play the guitar, but he picked it up by himself and I made that his main hobby as a teenager. I don't know what he's going to be when he's older, but it sure helps me shape who he is going to be. Okay, so let's talk about chores. In a traditional household, your teen sim should take care of the following chores. They should clean the dishes, take out the trash, work on objects that need repairing, changing the thermostat, helping their youngest siblings with homework, mopping and vacuuming, and grilling. You want your sims to grill instead of cook because it helps with the outdoor adventure badge. You should also have them take care of toddlers and help with that. In a non-traditional household, your teen sim should be doing all of the above plus the following chores. And not traditional here does mean a household in which your sim needs to bring in money. So your sim's chores should include gardening and fishing, painting, programming, writing, and playing an instrument for tips. There is also collecting, which I mentioned here because I do not know how much money you can make off it, but I know it's a lot. Now there are diminishing returns for these, and I mentioned them in terms of how profitable they are. So that's the sending order. Gardening is the most, tips is the least. That is not to say that you're not able to do these for money later, this is just what will earn them the most money at first. Your sim can do any of these in lieu of doing any of the part-time jobs, though if you have too many sims in your household, a part-time job might be a good option if you just want to get them out of there for a bit. It's just not going to be too profitable for your sim. Aside from your sim's chores, you also need to focus on their social life. It can be kind of hard to do this if your teen is an overachiever like mine tend to be, so an easy way to get around this is with clubs. Go into the Simology panel and then click on Create a Club. Here you can choose all sorts of activities for your sims to do, but the important thing is to make sure that you choose the right age group. Your sim will eventually age out of it, so make sure to only do this for their teen club. If you want your sim to keep their workout group after they age up, do not limit the ages or change the rules, but make sure to do it before your sim ages up. That is to say, do it when they're a teenager so they have a chance to have a social life. To start a club gathering, go into the club, click on start a gathering, and then have your sim start the gathering at the headquarters of the club or their home. Choosing headquarters outside of the home is great because it will allow your sim to meet other sims in particular life stages or who are into particular hobbies. For this sim, I chose to have her start a debate club and added a bunch of sims I thought she might be interested in. I chose research and debate as a skill to focus on because it's going to make university exponentially easier when she grows up. But aside from that, no lie, the cute sims she's hanging out with are also really important. Which leads me to my next part of the video, how your teen sim can find a partner. Meeting sims that are age appropriate for your teen sim can be done in a few different ways. You can do it through the club system like I showed you, in which case the game will pull up the available teens in the neighborhood and you can add them and get to know them like that. If you want to increase the friendship bar quickly, you can always have your sim take pictures of them or with them. That will make them friends almost immediately. Other ways to find potential romantic partners for your teen sims are by having them meet sims at school or at any venue. Though unless a lot has teen hangout traits, this one is kind of random and you might not meet any. Once your sim has a boyfriend or girlfriend, they can promise themselves to each other, though this doesn't actually do anything, it just provides this really cute mood lid that keeps your sim happy for a long time and strengthens your sim's relationship to the romantic partner. To be clear though, your sim is not engaged and does not have to follow through with this commitment when they are adults, but it is cute when they are kids and it does make them both really happy. So if you think it's gonna last, do it. Your sims are not able to woohoo at this point, they can uh, quote unquote mess around. It's not the same thing, apparently. But in any case, your sim can be intimate with another sim when they're a teenager. You just have to make sure that they have time and have found the right sim. 
Remember also that this does affect their sexual orientation, which I will get into in a different video. By the time your sim ages up, they should have a large variety of skills that you can pull from, and you'll be able to have them apply to university, start a job, or move them out of the household. Again, make sure to apply to university straight away. Keep working on those positive character traits because they're going to help a lot during your teens adult year. Okay, I hope this helped. Please don't tease me. Subscribe if you like this. Bye!